morning, guys. Uh, we're a few days late on our podcast we've been trying to do. He's getting some work done at their computer, so wasn't able to uh, make a podcast in time. But, uh, but we got the computer back now, so we able to post another one. So today, we're going to be talking about the Razor 200, the Youth Model Razor. Youth Model Razor. So, you know, kind of going into it, y'all watch our channel, y'all watch our videos, and you go, why would they, or what would they know about a youth model razor, or, you know, the 200s, or any of those rides like that. Yeah. And to kind of give you a back history, I mean, we can go all the way back to the very first year that the Razor 170s actually came out. Uh, Tanner was pretty young then, and our dad went and ordered one and bought the very first year model that ever came out. It was like the first one in Texas or something. Yeah, it was, it was very, very new. You know, so like he had the first year, which was by far the worst year they made them, you know, as far as the cooling yes. systems and the the floorboards. The I mean, floorboards, right yeah. off the bat, the floorboard, it had a stick come through it and, you know, like almost hit another kid in the leg. You know, it was, yeah, it was terrible. It was terrible. And then uh, years later, my youngest son, I had went and bought one and it was the very last year model they made that was carbureted. Yeah. I had the very last carbureted year, and then our friend Brad that rides with us, he has a fuel injected. He has uh, like the first set. year of fuel injected? Or? First or second year first of fuel injected. Yeah. yeah. So he had a fuel injected model. So we, we've had hands on, like, lots of ride time and personal experience with kind of the years of growth yeah. on the Razor 170s. So, I mean, and. I don't want a bad mouth in the 170s because, I mean, they are, you know, a decent size size for a young kid, but the way me, the way I grew up, the way Brent grew up, the way Brent's kids grew up, we grew up riding stuff from diapers, basically. So by the time we got old enough to drive the Razor 170, even Brad's kids, we were we were hard on them, so we didn't take it easy on them. So, I mean, that's could be part of the issue why we had so many issues with them because we were experiencing that before. We were just balls to the wall everywhere. Yeah, they, they were very weak. Yeah. Very weak out of the whole box. Like I said, the the very dangerous on the floorboards on those. They had no underbelly protection for a long time. I can't speak for the last couple of years of them, but I know for even all the way up through the first fuel injector models, they, yeah. they had no floor protection in them, which is very dangerous. Even if you ride it any woods, because you're, you're talking about seven inches of ground clearance. I mean, yeah. you're, you're all on the ground. Any stick bounces up and hits that floor. Yeah, it's gonna puncture straight through it. Yeah. Uh, it's the floorboard, I remember uh, slightly the floorboard in 170. Uh, our dad thought me when I was young was, it was all glued together, pieced back together, it was glue everywhere and I think. Yeah. But, so the 200, they made some good upgrades. I, have, I still have a couple complaints about them, but we'll talk about what we like first. So, the true independent, style suspension front and rear to me is the biggest the best upgrade they've yeah. done by far yeah. yes having true a frames true spindles trailing arm for radius rods oh my god way yeah. way better than the 170. yeah it should be a lot i'm not saying it's still going to be able to hold up to everything but it should be a lot stronger than the swing arm style the 170s in the back and yeah and i mean so. And we even have a friend we rode with in the past. They had a 170 that, I mean, they broke the swing arm completely. Like, it cracked in half on theirs. Yeah. Uh, so, those were, we never broke one of those. I will say that. But they, they are prone to breaking as well. So, safety features. They stepped up their game on safety features big time with 200. So, the 170s, they never did the uh, geofencing. That's what it's called, right? Yeah, geofencing. So, the 170s, they never put the geofencing in it. But the Ranger... 150s, they put the geofencing in it. So when they came out with the 200 Razor, they put the geofencing in it. Then you got, you know, like a, even the side size that we ride, they got seatbelt sensors. Uh, the helmet they, sensors. They got the helmet sensor on the 200. Yeah. Uh, they stepped their game up on the safety thing. Uh, and they're remote killing all that through the ride command app. Yeah. So you can control everything from your phone. You yeah. know, where the 170 was. Hope I catch them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, crank up and go. And, and that's the way they were. But So, uh, the 200 that we filmed, just none of ours. Uh, I don't have any kids. Brent's kids aren't young enough. So, it's a friend of ours. He has a couple daughters, three daughters. Three daughters, yeah. And he was, let us come over there and make a video about it. Of course, we knew enough about it where we felt comfortable. 
comfortable posting that information out there. So, uh, you know, that was, it was nice of him to let us come out there and. Uh, well, that was our first time to lay out yeah, there. That, that was really my first time, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we knew they came out, we knew they had them. Uh, I know there's a big market for them, so, you know, it worked out for us to be able to go see it firsthand. Yeah. So, one of my biggest, I have two big complaints about the 200. My first one is the lug pads. Why? When you're going to design a whole brand spanking new ride, <laughs> yeah. why can you not make a hub yeah. match the rear or the rear match? Like that's yeah. the so the front thing. two hubs and the rear two hubs from the front to back are different bolt patterns or lug patterns, which I'm sure Polaris has probably teamed up with somebody. I don't know for sure, but I'm sure they probably teamed up with ITP or somebody to make aftermarket wheels. Yeah, well, you buy a set. And when I was but, looking up the the aftermarket accessories, you can buy them through Polaris. Okay. So they already have a big wheel uh, tire wheel kit out. But but if you didn't like their wheels that they already have designed for that, then when you go buy a different set of wheels for it, you have to buy two different. You have to make sure you buy two different lug pads. Yeah. Which I think is stupid. And if you ride a lot, and I mean this is very few people, but if you ride a lot and you can't switch your wheels from front to rear, yeah. then that's a big deal. You know, we ride a lot of miles, so we actually, uh, essentially like a car, rotate yeah. our tires. Or if you have a flat, you know, yeah. if you're going to carry a spare wheel, yeah, you, you can't. can't too, yeah. yeah, you can't carry a front wheel or a rear wheel without having both of them, essentially. Yeah. So uh, that, uh, that is a big, and that's not, I mean, hell, even the 170 wasn't that way. It's like, yeah. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't know. understand the engineering behind that, or if they just ran out of stuff to make hubs, and they're like, we're just going to do this. Yeah, I, uh, who I know. knows. But uh, I know my other complaint with, or about it, some of y'all watching this may disagree, but in my shoes, I feel like they should have made it faster. Because, and I'll say because, you can control the speed off your phone through the ride command app. So, if you have a kid that's more experienced driving, he can at least go, I would, I would make it go no faster than 40. Yeah. But, you can, like I said, if you don't have a kid that has less experience, you can control it off your phone on the 200. So, yeah. I feel like they should have made it faster for the little bit older and more experienced kids. Yeah, because those things are rated up to teenage year. Right? So you're not actually supposed to start driving that thing until you're 12 or 13. I don't know the exact number, but yeah. you know, I remember ours, you know, they were they're so you talk about a 12 or 13 year old kid, if they're experienced, you know, a 25 to 28 mile per hour ride, yeah. it's not I think they're governed at like 28 or something yeah. like 200, which isn't any faster than 170. The 170 is still pretty much do the same speed. Yeah. So I wish they would have made it faster. My biggest thing was, you know, if I'm going to complain about it, is they call it a 200, and it's really only a 180. Like yeah. It's 180.1 cc or something like that. You know what I mean? It's not a 200 at all. Yeah. You, you should have just bumped it up to a 180 or whatever, but you call it a 200 and it ain't even close. So when you look at the Ranger 150 and you go, hey, I, that's like a lot less than the Razor 200. It's not. The Ranger 150, I believe, is right at 150 cc's, and this yeah. one's only 180, so they should be pretty comparable. And it probably does the exact same speed as right. the Razor 200. So, but, but this, the biggest thing about it is the independent suspension. That's the biggest thing. The, how they upgraded that made it a lot better. So I know that the 170s were super, super prone to bending front A-frames. And it's because it only had one A-frame. The strut bolted to the A-frame. I mean, if you built a track, and we did, we had tracks built, and you went and hit a corner hard, you'd bend an A-frame almost every single time. Yeah. And I mean, it would bend the A-frame to the point you couldn't hardly get the strut off, you couldn't hardly get the A-frame out of the frame. Like, they were bending them, not to where the toe end was out so much, but like, it was bending to where you almost couldn't drive it. Yeah, and, they were and they were real bad. If you look at all the 170s, they had yeah. Like Volkswagen tow in, they were just they bent little by little until the tires just got yeah. more and more on the front. Yeah. Uh, so then, uh, also on the Razor 200s, they put uh, I don't remember the exact size, but they put uh, bigger tires on it to give you more ground clearance. I think they're Razor 22s now. 22 yeah. inch tires. So I think it gained like. It does look better. It, it looks does. better with a bigger wheel and it looks better with a bigger tire. Yeah, I right. think he gained like two or three inches of ground clearance. I don't remember. It's been yeah. a while since we actually filmed this video, so. Yeah, because the, the 170 was at seven inches, the 200 is at 10. Yeah. And uh, the 170 had, I think, nine, 19 inch tires on the front, 20s on the rear. And this has 22s all the way around. Yeah. 
So yeah, and uh, you know my biggest thing I like about the Razor 200 is it has functional doors. Yes, like it has real doors. The 170 had a big opening. They were bad about bending in the middle of those two, so you had to run solid doors in them to kind of reinforce that chassis to where uh, these are a little. Well, when you buy the 170 straight from the factory, it was just nets. It was just nets, yeah. yeah. And of course, everybody took those off because it wasn't quick nets like you yeah. had to like. Yeah, to loosen it up up here, yeah. and unbuckle it, then or buckle it, then tighten it, and it was the nets were a pain in the ass. Yeah. So the 200 with real functional doors. Uh, you know, it's a big, big plus to me. It actually looks like it's a Mini Pro XP. Yeah, basically, you know? yeah, it's a Mini Pro XP. So where the Razor 170, I guess it kind of mimicked the XP 1000s. It would be as close as the yeah. 200s. The 200 looks a lot like a Pro XP, which is cool. Yeah. And, and I mean, you're going to go buy a side-by-side -side for your kid to go ride, and I get that, and that's what people want. But what do your kids want? They want something that looks like your ride. They and want that's, something that looks like dad or yeah. whoever. Yeah. You know, so if you're going to go buy one, you want it to be a miniature version of what you already own, in a sense. So, like, it, yeah. then they did that good on the 200. The 200 looks like you just took a big razor and just whoop, yeah. shrunk it down. I mean, the, the suspension, the doors, the cage, the dash, like, everything looks like a miniature Pro, Pro XP. XP. Yeah, they did a really good job designing all the little details on the Pro XP. I mean, it's LED lights now, and it's got a real, like, set of tail lights compared to the fake tail lights with the one in the, the yeah. 170 had one center tail light and then, like, two fake stickers, where this one has, like, real tail lights and stuff in it. So, yeah. it, it, it is a, a real version in a youth model. And another thing about the 200 compared to the 170 is really nice. The upgrades and accessories are endless, just like a Razor that you know Brent has. Like you can buy bumpers, nerf bars. I mean, you can buy all kinds of stuff for the 200. Where the 170s, you couldn't get yeah. a lot of that stuff. Yeah, and the and I mean, I mentioned that in the video. The the player stuff. I mean, and like I said, it wasn't ours. It was a friend of ours named Ori. You know, and thank him to his family for letting us do that. But yeah, like if he wouldn't have told me that he bought all that stuff, I would have never really did come on. Like it, just, yeah, it looked like it was something that just rolled off the the, the line, you know. I mean, it, it actually form and function and fit was really clean. Yeah, so that's nice because you can buy like we we're talking about. And really, it's bumpers. cheap. Yeah, it's cheap parts. The bumpers, I mean, really. Yeah, but for how cheap it is, it looks good. Like yeah. what Brent was saying, like it. I mean, it looks like you paid a pretty good dollar for them, but it's, I mean, yeah. it's not that expensive. And the video, you know, I think it's you know we put we put the Polaris prices on there, so I mean you're talking about. Front bumper was like 120 bucks or something. The rear bumper was like 100. Something. I mean, it's really, really cheap accessories. Yeah. Basically, considering that that's like a what a seven, eight thousand dollars side by side now, uh, seven sixty eight yeah. ninety nine or something like I that. I don't know exactly. That sounds right. Yeah, you know. So I mean, you know, that's not a cheap ride for a kid in yeah. a sense. So if you had your choice, Brent, would you want the Ranger 150, 200? Or an old one seventy for your kids. Mm. I don't know. I really like. I haven't dealt personally with the Ranger one hundred and fifty. I think it's cool to have a little bed. Yeah. You know, if you're kind of mimicking a farm life or something like that, then I, I get that. But you know me. I mean, I like the two hundred. The the upgrades and accessories, like you said, are endless. Yeah. Lift kits are going to come out. Big tires are going to come out. Clutch kits are going to come out for it to where I don't think you're going to get that aftermarket support out of the Ranger 150. No, you probably And the won't. 170s are, and I will say this, they have a limited lifespan. If you really went and bought a 170 and you put it on a three or four year note, it, if you rode it hard, it, they don't last that long. <laughs> no, you're, you aren't going to have a 170 anymore. No, it's just going to still be paying on it. Like I said, he had one, I've had one. You know, our friend Brad has one, like, yeah. and we work on them way more than you enjoy them. I mean, they're not, I mean, I, they're a nuisance in a yeah. sense. The so 170s were very I mean, painful. I, I'm buddy Brad, I mean, he literally legit works on it a lot more than me and Brad. Every, every time you ride it, yeah. I mean, every time you get it out, it, it's broke in some way. I mean, it's weird stuff. The, the gas tank cracked in half. I mean, yeah. this is just weird, random stuff that just happens on those. And that's because they were so rigid that things just, I mean, it rides like a chuck wagon. Even, yeah. even with kids in it, you just watch them bouncing around, and the 200 was way smoother. I mean, we seen her jump it and kind of yeah. wheelie and all that, and it rode way smoother than the 170 did. So, yeah, I mean, I think I'd go with the 200. And 
And, uh, I mean, I was looking the other day, uh, Tanner has an ABF cage on his ride, and I think ABF put something out on Instagram the other day, they're fixing to start making cages for the 200s. Oh, really? Yeah, so you I can buy an aftermarket that. cage for a 200. And if it's not that company, I don't know. I, I did see an aftermarket brand that's out that's fixing to start building cages for them. So, like, that's cool. Yeah. You know, yeah. if your kids are really into it, and you're into it, and you've got a custom ride, then your kids want a custom ride, so. Yeah, pretty much, like, you know, your kids are the same way as I want to be like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and that's, and that's how we roll. I couldn't go buy a stock 200 and keep it stock. We, we didn't do it with the 170s, you know. Yeah. We, we built them up, and, you know, every ride we have is somewhat customized. There's another stock ride in our group anywhere as far as just anything. It'd be a tough choice for me between the Razor 170 and the Outlaw. Yeah, but unless it's super cheap and they're yeah. not. I mean, I was looking the other day after we dropped this video because I was like, man, the, the 200s are really expensive. But you get on Facebook Marketplace and 170s are still going for like three to five thousand dollars. You're just like, man, it's. I don't know if it's the supply and demand of today's market, you know, which is, I mean, Crazy. anybody that's watching this video, y'all know how the world is right now. I mean, everything is way more expensive than it should be. Yeah. But, so it's 170 for me if I had a kid to buy one for. Uh, 170's out. But it'd be a tough choice between the 150 and the 200. Yeah. Because, like Brent said, the one thing that would lead me towards the 200 would be the accessories that you can get. You'd probably get a lot of aftermarket support for it. And I think but, it's a little safer. Yeah, it's the 150, safer. The Ranger don't have doors and stuff yeah. like that, so. But if my, you know, if I had a kid and they said, hey, I'd like to, and I took them looking at them, and uh, they said they like the 150 better, and it was a little cheaper, then I'd I mean, probably end up getting the Ranger 150. Yeah. This is a tough choice. I mean, they're both identical. The Ranger 150 has the uh, geo fencing, just like the 200 that you can control off the ride command, so you just probably get a little. The safety less, features are still there. Yeah, you probably just get a little less aftermarket support, right. like what you're saying. You might get a front bumper. I don't know about a rear bumper, but like doors and stuff, yeah, probably not. Yeah. Until the aftermarket world catches up, and I don't know if it would be high enough to where you could afford the parts and the sims. Yeah. So. But, you know, I mean, I think from what I've seen, and I mean, time will tell, the the Razor 200 something they should have done a long time ago. Yeah. Because when we're going back, I mean, I'm trying to think of the first year they came out. With the 170? Yeah. Dude, it had to be 2010 to 2012, somewhere around there. Well, mine was know. the last fuel injection year, was, or last carburetor year was 2013. So it may have been a little earlier. Because I think 14, you, well, maybe 14. One of the, you could get both one year. Yeah. And the year I got mine was, I actually went and bought a carburetor model because I could work on a carburetor. Yeah. A fuel injection model, especially on something that cheesy. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's really a carburetor with a high pressure pump, and it, and it was they were to, prone to break. I don't want to say yours was like a nine or a ten. I'm about to say I'm trying to think of how or how old I was when Dad bought that one for me, and then I could come up with a year. So it may, it may have been a year or two before 2010, so like 2008, 2009. Maybe yeah, maybe. But either way, I mean those were those were the worst of the years. The carbureted models, when they kind of ended, was the better ones to me. The fuel injection models had issues. Yeah. Uh, Brad's had issues with his multiple times. Other people we've known that's had them. I mean, they have running issues. They run fine for a long time, and then they just quit running fine. And then you go let them and cool down, and then they run fine again. So like, they they were prone to a lot of problems that were hard to troubleshoot on a fuel injection model. And the uh, yeah, the air intakes on the old carburetor ones were. Junk. I mean, you had a free snorkel. They made a snorkel kit where you could run a, the air intake up in between the two uh, seats. Right. Because the air intake was down there by the damn tire, which is the same way on the 200. I don't know why they went back with that style. But and if you just, ride in a field, yeah. I mean, if you ride in dirt, dirt's fine. You get to ride in a field. A lot of these people live in the country, and you have grass fields, hay fields, even tall grass that you're trying to drive through. It sucks that it'll suck up in that intake and it'll actually overheat the engine and burn them. Like, not necessarily catch them on fire, but it will burn them down as far as overheating the air cold motors. Yeah. So, I mean, you have to get out and, you know, clean off the air filter. And, which, I don't know why they still went back with that design, because, I mean, it's been a known issue since they very first came out with them. So, uh, that's another complaint. I yeah. forgot about that until now. Yeah. But, I mean, overall, I mean, I think they made a bunch of big improvements. Yeah, big improvements. Right. But I mean, if you, if you made it this long, thank you. Uh, 
So this video is coming out a couple days late. We'll just kind of catch up to why. We have growing pains with this channel. I mean, we're new to this. We're new to the world of YouTube and technology. Say, yeah, <laughs> essentially technology. You know, we're not we're not big and all that. But no. so we we've had an editing software for a while that's worked really good for us. But it's pretty generic, pretty basic. You can't do a lot of extras with it. Uh, Tanner, being younger, wanted to upgrade. Uh, you know, I support that and. We got a better editing software and realized that our computer wasn't as smart as the editing software. So Yeah, and I really wanted to upgrade for better quality videos. Yeah, we we're, we're wanted to make better quality videos. We we're wanted to get more effects. More but we got big plans coming. It yeah. just it's it's a tier or a stair step, you know, it can't obviously and, happen overnight. And we're both broken shit. So. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if y'all bought diesel lately, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I don't have a diesel side by side right now. So yeah, so we got a new editing software. The computer couldn't handle it, so we still have to use the old one until we save that money to upgrade computers. So yeah. or not upgrade computers, but get our computer upgraded. Yeah, it needed, so, you know, I mean, you computer wizards out there, and it needed more RAM and more memory and more speed and all that oh, googly shit. I don't yeah, know. Whatever that shit yeah. is. We took it to a guy that knows stuff and told him what we had and what we did and what we needed to do, and he said, okay. Yeah. Did he get it right? We don't know yet. Yeah. But, <laughs> We're about to try it right after this video. So. But uh, we did pay him yeah. to tell us that we got what we wanted, so I don't know. You know? So that's <laughs> it. It's waiting for the computer to get done. So. Uh, yeah, so this, you know, this video is running a little bit behind. We still plan on you know, dropping a video every week, obviously. Yeah. We've got a couple. So y'all actually get to this week because yeah. we'll get this podcast and then we were dropping another riding video this Sunday another crossbar we still have one more crossbar so we still video have one video. crossbar left y'all see this weekend then so. we got another ride weekend uh, you know I went, uh, to sum it up Tanner went to a different park this last weekend yeah. a park that I haven't been to in a long time he hasn't been to in a long time it's not our normal ride we haven't really been through the footage so. I don't know if it's going to make a video or not but we're going to try to make a video out of it it was just me that went so well I met some other people up there but like everybody had a normal group except for Caleb yeah exactly. Caleb with the yellow magnet went but other than that Brandon nobody else went so, so it was a little hard for me to get footage that way I'm by myself trying to do a one man show uh, Riley did help out a little bit so thanks Riley but but yeah, so we're, we'll go over that footage. Hopefully there's enough to drop something. I'm yeah. sure there will be. If anything, we'll make a short or something out of it. I mean, I have four. We don't have any shorts out yet, but we'll. You know, I do have it. one 12 minute clip that would be a good one for well, us. See, there you go. <laughs> I mean, it's one solid video that's 12 minutes long. So. Right. Yeah, where's your drill at? Well, yeah. So we got a couple more videos to post. We know for sure at least two more riding videos, maybe three if that one that I just went on this last weekend turns out good. Right. Uh, we have a ride actually planned now for 4th of July weekend. Well, 4th of July is on Monday, so. The weekend that, prior, yeah. Yeah, the weekend prior, 4th of July. I don't know if I'm going to make it. I'm uh, in the process of changing careers right now for my real job, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it. But if anything, brand's still going to make it at least one video from that. We'll get it because it's somewhere I've been before. It's a video we've already dropped, but there is another section that we want to. Uh, that we want to do. You know, we'll, I guess we'll kind of wrap that up here. Yeah. Going, you know, going back to the 200, yes, I think it's a great ride. Uh, Ori has been on some big rides. That, that 200's been to Mina. The clip of them kind of riding behind the side by side, that was at Mina. It made the whole trip, the whole weekend without any issues. Um, they've got some cool upgrades on it. You know, it's got whips, it's got a sound bar, you know, so it, yeah. it, the girls love it. I mean, they do. They, they love their ride. Um, we did brass them a little bit on the video yeah. because that girl rides. We've seen the videos and we've heard their parents talk like she rides hard. Than hard. Most boys, probably. Yeah, she drives the wheels off that thing. And then the day we put a camera in front of her, she she did a little grandma putt putt on us. But but it was funny, Ori. Uh, you know, the guy that let us film it that actually bought the Razor 200 for his kids. He hates being in front of the camera. So at the end of the day, when we were done filming, we were getting ready to pack up and leave. Uh, Ori's kids, uh, his daughters went inside the house or whatever, and so he had to drive it back up to the house. And so he got in it, and uh, Brent looks at 
me and goes, oh, Ori's getting in and gets the camera out. And Ori's like, oh, hell no. He's like, come on back at it. Yeah, he's like, I'm not being on camera. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so we have a lot of good times, you know, with the people we ride with. And, and a lot of people, uh, I mean, I can't say it enough. A lot of people support us and what we want to do. We, we surround, we've been lucky enough to be surrounded by a really good group of friends. So. Yeah, I mean, oh. Ori's been on one ride with us. We've known him for kind of a shorter period of time. He's one of those people that rides. He's become an instant friend. The um, first, yeah, the first time we met him was the Bridgeport videos. Yeah. That was the first time we ever met him. You know, he does live here uh, close to us. I mean, like, even when we went and filmed the 200 video, like, we rode side by, I rode by side by side to his house. So, yeah. you know, I mean, like, but, you know, for them to go, hey, I want to make a video on your youth model, and he just goes, sure, do whatever you want to do. I mean, that that's... That's people that support us and what we want to do. Like, yeah. We want to bring y'all information because we've been through it. I can yeah. tell you right now, I would never recommend anybody to buy a Razor 170. Yeah. I, I guarantee you. If you ask me if I wanted to buy a Razor 170, I'd tell you, I'd probably actually go tell you about like a Massimoto or whatever those things are called. Like, get something else. <laughs> go buy one of those things in front of Tractor Supply. Yeah. Before that. <laughs> no, right. I mean, they're. For what you pay for them, there's no quality there. I think the yeah. 200 really stepped up to the point that the the price range and what you get is really, really good compared to the, the 170. I, I agree with you. Yeah. But anyways, uh, we're probably boring everybody at this point, so. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, we appreciate y'all watch, watching and subscribing and liking, just supporting us. All in all, it uh, really makes us want to go ride more. So, and it inspires, uh, motivates us to actually get these videos done and make what to us are good quality videos. Yeah. Some other YouTubers that may be shitty, but you never know until you do it. You never know until you try it. Um, you know, we 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 watch a lot of YouTube as well. Uh, uh, a lot of YouTube. I watched a podcast just the other day, and I haven't told Tanner this. I watched a podcast that if you watch any kind of drag racing and stuff, it was actually Farm Truck and Asian. Uh, Farm Truck and Asian have their own YouTube channel. They did a podcast with a guy in Oklahoma, and one of Asian's, you know, kind of like things was like, if you had advice to get anybody, what would it do? Like, if you have an idea, then go do it. Yeah. You can't fail if you don't try, and you don't know what's going to work and what's not going to work till you go do it. So that's what we're doing. You know what I mean? We're this podcast, if you if you go back and look right now, the views aren't there. But we have belief that you give this time, this is going to go somewhere. So that's what yeah. we're doing. We're spending the time to we're spending the time and the effort to try to build this into what we think it can be. And on top of that, we just enjoy it. Yeah, we enjoy talking about it. And sadly enough, you caught every video with just us. Yeah. We're going to bring some guests in. We did one whole video. We mentioned that last time with Damon in it. Yeah. Probably the best podcast we had. It was funny. We was all cracking up the whole time. Like, it was just a good time. Man. Yeah. Not a lick of sound. Yeah. Total waste of time. Yeah. We did, it was like an hour long podcast that was, that it didn't record any audio. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we do have some guests in here. We, Brad has a really crazy work schedule now. Uh, he's back to doing his driving and stuff. So, we asked him to come be in this because he has first-hand experience with the Razor 170s as well. Yeah. Sadly enough, I mean, just kind of with our timing and stuff, he just couldn't be in it, which we hate because he would have been a good person. And his personality, yeah, yeah, his personality is a good, a good thing to carry into video. Uh, and that's what it's about, like, the, the personalities that work on camera and the personalities that don't, you know. So yeah. people just don't camera very well, and I, I get it. And we... For sure, as hell did when we first started. So yeah, I mean, we, we got better at it. We're still not very good, but we, we got some blooper reels that we'll probably drop at some point. Yeah, like, wow, <laughs> idiots. But, but so yeah, yeah thank y'all. Uh, we're rambling now, so we probably need to stop. Yeah. But thanks for watching. Uh, like I said, it don't take you no time. Please, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. If you have any questions or comments or something you want to see in the podcast. Something you want to hear. Do you have some questions that go, hey, in the next podcast, can you mention this? Because some comments we can't go into depth. Not really on YouTube. But if you have a question that you go, hey, I want y'all to say something or explain something, then drop a comment in here. We'll, we'll talk about it.